Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to a misty Brussels, but I assure you this afternoon's discussions will be anything but misty as we get into our transatlantic dialogue on the future of agriculture to make it more resilient, sustainable, and indeed climate ready. And it's my great pleasure to introduce to you someone that needs actually little introduction. He is, of course, a two-term former European Commissioner for Environment, research and innovation. He is a co-chair of the United Nations International Resources Panel. He is the chairman of the RISE Foundation, but it's in his context as chairman for the Forum for the Future of Agriculture. I give a warm welcome to my great friend and colleague, Janusz Potosznik. Thank you, Mark. Uh, dear friends, in particular those coming across the Atlantic, good afternoon to everybody. It's a real pleasure to see all of you this afternoon, and in particular, as I said, warm welcome to the members of the delegation, which has traveled from the United States ahead of the formal stakeholder meeting for the EU-US collaboration platform on agriculture. As you know, the forum mission is helped build a more resilient, sustainable, and climate-smart food and agriculture system both in Europe as well as globally. To achieve this goal, we have been long driven by the belief that by bringing different people together, by asking the right questions and working collectively on the answers, we will find ways to break out of our silos, constructively challenge each other and be open to new ideas and ways of working, and thus transform our food and agricultural system. And nowhere is that more important than the partnership between the European Union and the United States. Together, both the EU and US have enormous influence and ability to affect change on the big strategic challenges of our time. And that is absolutely applicable to the food and agricultural system. In the past, we have to acknowledge that we have not always seen eye to eye, but many of us have long thought that by seeking to understand each other approach better, by sharing in each other's learnings and ideas, and working together to innovate, not just in technology, but in practices, we create a platform for the European Union and United States to lead in building a more resilient, sustainable, and climate-smart food and agriculture system. And never has this been more important than now. In the past month, COVID-19 now war in Ukraine and the summer packed with extreme weather events have shaken the world's commodity chains, shortages, and fears of shortages are stretching also European economies. Such system change eco deeply. It is not just shipments of food and fuel, but the fertilizers and feeds at the right time in the farming cycle. And the rare component metals on which the energy sector transition relies. Most developed economies and the euro area are experiencing inflation at historical levels. All the governing bodies are focusing on providing stability, on addressing the energy, food, materials crisis, and improving their security provision. They do not have an easy task, and one which is made harder by the climate and biodiversity crisis, which is more enduring and arguably existential. The outcome of the recent COP27 served to remind us that 1.5 degrees Celsius is only just alive, if indeed still is. Whilst in Canada, the COP15 is discussing ways to conclude a Paris-style agreement to mitigate and reverse the extraordinary pressure on biodiversity and natural resources. Today, dear friends, it's also World Soil Day, a timely reminder that man's very existence depends on 
50 centimeter layer of topsoil and the fact that it rains. Soil is the building block of agriculture and life, and yet we lose 24 billion tons of fertile soil every year, undermining our food system and releasing carbon back into the atmosphere. The very opposite of actually what we should be doing. The need for substantive action has never been more necessary and urgent. To an extent, I'm reassured. Many of you in this room today are at the leading edge of the creativity and <coughs> sorry, innovation on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. Innovation in terms of farming practices, digital technologies, the way you secure and trade in supply chains, and adopting enabling public policies, such as those under the European Union Green Deal or the US Inflation Reduction Act, all of which can regenerate our soils, conserve water, restore biodiversity, reduce emissions, and capture and store carbon. And you are doing this in ways which maintain and enhance the production of our food and the profitability of farmers. So, thank you. That's good news. Now, for the bad. It's not enough. It's not enough systemic. Standards and behavior patterns linked to the current economic model were set by us in high-income countries, including Europe and the United States. Also, the benefits of natural resource exploitation, use, and over-exploitation have mainly landed in our countries. We are thus ethically bound to show we are willing and able to change a reality created and to lead the essential transition at home, but also globally. While the responsibility for the past is clear, responsibility for the future is, of course, shared. But only by leading that transition, only by first looking into the mirror, we would give nobody an excuse to repeat some of the mistakes done in the past and avoid collective failure. I applaud the phenomenal amount of work that is being directed towards innovation to reduce the impact of our current system. But without full-scale system change, this innovation will unfortunately fail short of what is needed to meet our climate and biodiversity targets. As you meet here today and over the coming days at the CPA, I want to ask you to keep a number of questions in mind. What would I need to do to make my innovation, to take my innovation further, faster, with even greater impact? Who would I need to work with to make the ideas and innovation systemic? And how and in what ways would greater collaboration between the United States and the European Union help? This is what Forum is all about and actually what the planet needs, what we need. And it's why we have put furthering the transatlantic partnership between the European Union and the United States in this vital area at the heart of our own strategic agenda. Now it's not the time to call off the European Union Green Deal or US Drive for Climate Smart Agriculture, both of which are ambitious and necessary policy frameworks. Rather, the COVID crisis and the war in Ukraine have accelerated the need to transition and regenerate our food system. It is a most pressing task, and whilst I very much hope that you will enjoy the discussion today and the remainder of the week, that we will deepen existing relationships and build new ones. I implore you to work in ways which enable your ideas to scale across European Union and United States, and of course, globally. That is what we are actually here for. Thank you again for being here, for joining us. And since we are already in December, I wish you all healthy and happy 2023, and good luck.